Today, I will demonstrate how SQL Grease can help you identify the root cause of a query execution timeout. The query timeout was identified by the SQL Grease event and notification engine. We demoed configuration of this in a previous video. We'll get started with opening an email delivered to notify us of an event occurring. This email contains the details of what caused the event to trigger. We can click on the link to log in and view the notification. This notification requires acknowledgement. For now, we'll just have it remind us in 30 minutes. Let's look into the details of the event that caused this. This was caused by an execution timeout error. There were three events that occurred in the display time frame. We'll look at the first that occurred since that triggered the notification. We are now looking at a snapshot view of the session that experienced a query timeout. With this, we can see the full query text and a second-by-second -second view of the query execution. Each row represents a one-second interval in time. It also indicates what the query was doing in that interval. It appears in each interval the query was waiting on a lock held by session ID 2. Let's click on the blocker session to see the lock tree. There are three sessions involved in the lock. Our session, 110, was blocked while performing an insert. Session ID 2 appears to be performing an index rebuild. The index rebuild is being blocked by another session. The root blocker is session 101 is performing an insert. We can click on the node to view the full query text and the session snapshots. From the session snapshots, we can see the query is consistently encountering I.O. waits. We could click on the query hash to view more details on this query. We can see that at 2.02 a.m., this query showed much higher I.O. wait time than usual. This raises the question of whether this is the result of more physical I.O. or slower disk performance. We will switch to the I.O. chart to help answer this question. We can click on the chart legend to hide some statistics that we don't need. We can see that at 2.02 a.m., the query performed 447 physical reads per execution. This is slightly lower than usual. We can rule out increased physical I.O. being the cause of the higher I.O. weight. We are currently only looking at workload from a single query. We need to look at total workload from all queries to see what might be causing the slower I.O. We will use the history view to do this. First, we will adjust the time frame to include the 2 a.m. period where our timeout occurred. We'll switch our displayed statistic to weights. There is a high amount of I.O. weights occurring. This query appears to be the main contributor. We'll take a look at disk I.O. performance next. We can do this by adding additional charts. There is clearly an increase in disk queue length. This appears to correspond to higher I.O. workload. We'll look at the query with the highest I.O. weight in more detail next.
This appears to be collecting fragmentation information from the DMDB Index Physical Stats DMV. This DMV could generate a lot of physical I.O. Let's switch to the I.O. chart to see this. We can see high amounts of physical reads occurring. These are average values, so multiplying them by the execution count will give us the totals. It should also be noted that these data points are charted at the time of a query completion, so a query that registers high I.O. at 2.16 a.m. could have actually been running since 2 a.m. To recap our analysis, we identified the root cause of a query timeout. It was a result of two layers of blocking. The blocks were caused by locks held due to slow I.O. The slow I.O. was caused by a maintenance query. Thank you for watching.